welcome to Motivated to Lead podcast, helping you become a better leader. I'm your host, Mark Klingsein. Hi, everyone. Thanks again for joining us for our podcast this week. My name is Mark Klingsheim with SEMA Partners. Each week, we interview leaders and they share lessons learned from their careers. Our goal is to help you become a better leader. Uh, we're revisiting some of our conversations in our previous uh, episodes, and uh, we've had some great guests. We have uh, a great lineup of guests coming up uh, here for the fall. Uh, this week, we're going to revisit our interview with Stacy Porter, who is the Chief People Officer at Outset Medical. Uh, she has uh, some great uh, experience in the area of uh, human resources and understanding uh, organizational design and best practices for uh, managing talent. And uh, she's got some uh, great insights she's going to share. Looking forward to our conversation with Stacy. Well, can you give us just a little bit of a, your story, a little bit of an overview of your career? Yeah, um, it's unusual. It is. It's definitely uh, not been a straight line. I actually started my career in sales, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I, I sold an orthopedic device for sports medicine and really loved that job. Um, at the time, I was actually getting my master's in clinical social work. I had a whole vision for myself being in like social justice and grant writing and and kind of higher level um, social change. But oddly enough, Mark, um, the, my, my social work career was really around um, identifying pathology and bringing people up to kind of normal levels to kind of like pass in society mm -hmm. and my sales career was all about strengths-based leadership and positive psychology and ordinary people doing extraordinary things together and i really gravitated to that so i um, did my doctoral work in organizational psychology became a talent person i have been studying leaders and leadership and uh, nimble cultures for now about 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I have dabbled in technology, but I really am a med device and pharma and health tech person. So um, have worked at Roche Pharmaceuticals, Intuitive Surgical, and now at Outset Medical as the head of people. Great. So I, I like to ask this question most every guest uh, that we have on is, uh, knowing what you know now, uh, what advice would you give yourself at the age of 22 if you're going back and talking to a Stacy at that age? Oh, gosh, I love that. Um, you know what I would tell myself is to be a little bit more fearless, to really just not worry about titles and take every opportunity that came my way. Um, it is so much about building a portfolio of work and building a really just mutualistic network. And I've done that now at this age, but it was a little slow going. I think early on, I was like, oh, I need to advance to this title and get this skill set. And, and it looked more like up was kind of the way to um, fulfillment and, and kind of actualization. And I really find that that's not the case at all. I would have just told myself, go everywhere, try things, you know, dabble. If the marketing team asks you to help them out, go over there and, 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 and work with them. Um, build, build a network, really support that network and build a portfolio of work you're proud of. Any advice that you received early on that you wish you would have ignored? Um, oh, I wish that I had ignored. Um, you know, I think for me, it was the, the, the advice I wish I had ignored um, was that HR or people teams need to not disrupt the business. Um, I got some advice about uh, HR and people teams needing to be like invisible, like kind of back scene, back office. And I think that's exactly, I think that's the worst advice I've ever heard. Um, uh, because really a people team, it, when they're good and they're committed to kind of delighting their employees, they can really elevate uh, culture and they can be stewards of culture in really important ways. So, so that's what I would have ignored that. I would also have ignored... I remember I had a an office mate when I was at Roche Pharmaceuticals, and he said, "Stacy, never give people the tools to hurt you. Never be vulnerable. Never mm -hmm. open up. Don't give people any ammunition that they can use against you." And I think that's also terrible advice. <laughs> so you you've seen a lot of new leaders come in, and maybe through the organization, a person that's promoted into a new leadership uh, position. Uh, what advice would you give to a new leader leading uh, their their team that they've inherited or or maybe they're building out a new team? What, what advice would you give them? 
Great question, Mark. I, I, I really like this one because I think it has um, a bit of a like multifaceted answer. The first thing is a new leader has to realize that they've got people's careers in their hands. So there's a gravity to management. Mm. And I think new leaders do very well by actually building allies and starting to be in a community where you can say, hey, have you ever had this situation? How did you approach it? And they start to get wisdom of the crowd kind of input. And then the third thing I would tell a new leader is get especially Olympic on three conversations. Know how to manage the priority conversation, know how to manage the performance conversation, and know how to really, really just just deeply engage on the growth conversation. If you do those three, you will be, um, you'll likely be a fantastic manager. So I know you have uh, you have a company that's growing rapidly uh, that you're a part of. Uh, talk a little bit about your company and then just some of the initiatives that you're doing. I know you've got some new ones for this year that you're instilling that you're excited about, but talk a little bit about uh, your company and, and just some of the initiatives you have going oh, on. Oh, ha- happy to. So as I mentioned, I'm at Outset Medical and we are a now public company. We went public in, in September um, 2020. We have a device for dialysis care and our device is cleared not only for the acute setting, but for the home. And mm. Mark, if you know anything about dialysis, it is very much a bad part-time job. And so the fact that we could have kidney disease sufferers actually treat in their home is very game changing, very innovative. Um, Our device actually does filtration of water in the device. And so we say any water anywhere and all you really need is a power hookup and a water hookup and you can dialyze at home. So very novel application, um, novel technology and disrupting a very kind of entrenched Um, environment. There has been very little innovation in dialysis care um, over the past 15 years. And so we were really trying to change that. And when I joined, there were 109 people at Outset and we're over 700 now. We're manufacturing our own device in Tijuana, Mexico. And this is a motley crew. This is an incredible group of people. And um, I've just been very fortunate to come in and really be able to go to the beginning of a company and build culture on a couple of principles. One for us is information flow, robust channels of information, because when people feel like they belong to an organization, it's because they know what's going on. (laughs) So, So that's really important. We really do build for that. We also, one of the initiatives that I, it goes beyond passion, it's like religion at this point, um, that I'm kind of a zealot about is is great management. And so we have a homegrown management program that we call Spark, that every single one of our people managers, Mark, up to the C-suite are going through in 2022. We're 50 in, we've got 85 to go. Um, And we feel like everybody deserves a great manager. We've got great human beings, we'll help them build the management skill. Hmm. So as you're, as you've seen the company grow from uh, 100 uh, to 700 plus now, uh, what have you seen as far as just the uh, maybe some managers that are able to adapt to, again, that scalability? What are some qualities that you see that that are so important for somebody to, to grow with them? Yeah, with the you know, I, I think it's I think it's a mindset it, mm-hmm. and in kind of 20th century management was manager in the middle kind of doling out bits of information to people and having dyadic relationships. 21st century management is a manager who designs an atmosphere for creativity and challenge and conflict and execution. And so that's a very different mindset to have. So when you see managers who really are intimate with their team, they sit alongside them, they work alongside them, they know people personally, because work is personal. I mean, don't get it twisted. We used to say it wasn't, and we would try to you know, compartmentalize. It is personal. Um, so, so I think that managers who really get that they are there to become catalysts of change, they're there to kind of design this atmosphere, they think of themselves as talent developers more than managers. Um, I think that's really critical. I also think it takes time. You know, we we know what is that statistic about 73% of accidents happen in flight the first time a crew flies together because they have no shorthand. Mm -hmm. They can't anticipate each other and it's the same way with teams. So as you're uh, helping your leaders grow within the organization, are there any books that you uh, would put on somebody's uh, reading list that you think are are, uh, helpful as far as getting someone to the next level of leadership? Oh, Mark, let me just go back 
<laughs> Just go back to your workshop. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, there are a couple. I love the book Multipliers by Liz Wiseman and Greg McEwen. That's a great mm -hmm. book. It's really a great book about if you believe people are intelligent, smart, and capable, how do you optimize them? I also uh, love the book Rework. The Rework is a fantastic book about how do you build nimble organizations. Um, and I actually almost reread that every year because it just got such sage advice on org design. And then there's a new book that came out, I think it was about maybe a year ago, maybe a year and a half, um, called Humanocracy. And it is all about how do you build these environments worthy of the people that work within them? How do you create environments where ideas can be worked into the organization? People can form teams. They can raise their hand to be a part of different opportunities. They can move around the organization. They can, um, you know, share their skills and share, you know, their expertise areas and learning for the org. It, it's a fantastic book. So talk a little bit about uh, your your leading the the people side of of the the organization with that in mind. Um, how do you get new uh, members of your team? You've got people that are growing within the organization, but bringing in somebody from the outside. Talk a little bit of things that you've seen that have worked really well for onboarding uh, new talent into to teams. Yeah, that, that's that's a, the right question because a lot of times in recruiting, we spend like 80% of our effort in recruiting and 20% in onboarding. And I have seen, and this is like a an organizational like tale of terror um, where you have like the manager not even there on the employee's mm -hmm. first day, you know, and so they're kind of just like um, they're, they're being raised by wolves or something, these new employees. What I do in my team and what we've done at Outset, we have a really strong onboarding program here, and it's centered around a couple of things. The first thing is, who do you need to know? Who do you need to know that is going to be a first tribe, a first network, and we assign what we call an OG, which is kind of slang for original gangster. It, for us, is Outset Guide. But the OG, which is interesting, Mark, is not somebody in your work group that's going to help you out. You'll form those relationships anyway. For us, an OG is somebody who's got six months of tenure on, on you. So uh, we just match people based on tenure. And th this person remembers what it's like to be new. They're six months in. They've learned some things. So you've got an OG. So we, we cover the community aspect and the relationship aspect. The other piece for us is one of the things people hate about being new is when they cannot manage their own calendar, when they don't know enough to anticipate like what work looks like and how they're going to fill their days. And so we have a really good onboarding program called Enboarder that gives new employees more control over just starting to kind of like work through this task and that task and this. And so they're able to create structure right away. And that's one of the most frustrating things about a new job is that ability to not be in control of your own kind of destiny in a new, new organization. And then the last thing that I would say is we get new hires involved right away. We have a program called the Bold Beginnings Experience. And when new hires have been here about a month, they're invited to headquarters and they get to be on site. They learn Dialysis 101. They sit with our CEO. We do a volunteering activity. We talk all about our business model. I do a culture piece. So we really immerse people. We get them feet first in their company. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's, that's well thought out. And uh, definitely, I think that's a piece that some organizations are, are missing to make sure that person's successful once they, they get uh, into the organization. So outside of work, what do you, what do you enjoy doing uh, as far as to recharge? Ah, by the way, thank you. I love that you asked this question because, you know, in these jobs, it is mental fitness. And so you need to have boundaries and they can't be inconvenient. Um, Mark, I have a 13 year old. He just is a newly 13 year old and he is delicious. He definitely is a little farm animal. He <laughs> is rolling his eyes more than when he was 12, but he plays basketball. So I love to go to his games. Um, I also am a swimmer. I love to walk. I love music. Uh, my husband is the cook in the family. He's an yeah. architect and a very, very good cook. Uh, I kind of just, you know, kind of wave my hands and try to season things and set the table and do the dishes. But we're we're a pretty, we like to travel, the three of us. So we travel, we've been kind of trip trapping through the national parks. And over the past two years with COVID, we've been in Yellowstone and the Tetons and Glacier and the Smoky Mountains and Acadia. And so um, yeah. we really try to get out in nature. 
Great. So what, what parting advice would you give a, a, a new, new leader as they, uh, they start their leadership uh, role? A couple of things. One is want to be a leader. You know, be be the kind of leader that people aren't showing up because you're on an org chart together. Be the kind of leader that people would follow because you're doing something important and you're doing it of value and you're a generous listener and you bring more than you take. Um, I think the other thing that I would say is get scholastic, right? Like start reading, read the books that you and I are talking about, read the articles, watch the TED Talks. Content is everywhere. And if you want to be a great leader, you have to study that like its own discipline. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's great, great advice. And uh, definitely appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to, to talk to us today. I know this can be helpful for a lot of the, the new leaders that are listening to this uh, this episode appreciate it and wish you continued success in, in all you're doing. Thank you, Mark. I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you for having me. Thank you for listening to the Motivated to Lead podcast. Please subscribe on iTunes. You can also see a video version of this interview at motivatedtolead.com. This podcast is brought to you by SEMA Partners, helping you find your next great leader.